Semiconductors, or chips, are essential components in things we use every day. They're made from the material that gave Silicon Valley its name, and they handle everything from artificial intelligence processing to simple functions like translating the press of a button into an electronic signal. Think of them as the brain of a device. So what happened? When the pandemic shut down car factories in March, automakers expected less orders for passenger vehicles, so in turn, cut their orders for chips. At the same time, working from home and 5G drove demand for laptops, smartphones, cloud services, and data centers, so those industries increased their orders for semiconductors. That caused chip makers to switch production to those areas rather than pile up chips they couldn't sell. But what both car and computer companies didn't expect was a quick rebound in demand for their products. So here lies the problem. There's now not enough supply to meet demand. And building chip factories takes years and costs billions of dollars. The answer in the near term is nothing can be done in a, in a, in a grand way that can infuse supply. Supply expansion takes time, takes addition of new factories, addition of new capacity. How bad could it get? Chip shortages are expected to wipe out $61 billion of sales for automakers alone. And big chip makers like Qualcomm, NXP and Infineon say the auto industry isn't the only sector to get hurt. Games console makers say things will get worse before they get better, potentially impacting holiday sales. President Biden has signed an executive order to look into why the US is so reliant on overseas chip manufacturers like Taiwan's TSMC and South Korea's Samsung. Companies such as Qualcomm, AMD, NVIDIA, all of these companies don't have factories of their own and rely on third-party manufacturers and over the last decade or so have become extremely reliant on TSMC. So how long before supply meets up with demand? Well, it's a guessing game, but some analysts say we won't see signs of a turnaround until the second half of the year. Ed Ludlow, Bloomberg News, San Francisco.